Hey everyone, I'm Dan. My girlfriend and I are building an expedition truck to travel Australia and potentially the world. So I've been getting a lot of requests from you guys to make a video on our pop top roof design, including the linear actuators and the guide rails. So we're gonna have a look at that today. I've also been installing the plumbing system, so we'll have a look at the way that I've done that too. Let's get into it. As you can see, with the pop top roof lifted, it sits quite a bit higher than the roof of the cab. And that's the reason that I made it a pop top. If we were to have it at this height permanently, it'd cause all kinds of problems with low hanging branches and wind resistance while driving. So I've used six linear actuators to lift the pop top roof. And I bought them all from a manufacturer in China through Alibaba. So far, I've been very happy with the build quality. I'm, who knows how they're gonna go long term? Uh, I'll update you on that as we go, but so far so good. Now using six actuators has meant that I, I haven't been able to synchronize them. It's easy to synchronize, to get a synchronized control box for four actuators, but if you want to synchronize any more than four, you've got to go with the more premium manufacturers, which costs at least uh, double than what these ones cost. I, I think I paid about two and a half thousand Australian dollars for these. So I've got, you know, engineering friends of mine have said that it, it is gonna create a problem because some actuators are gonna be carrying more load than others. And then I've got other friends that say, yes, some actuators will be carrying more load than the others, but it's not really gonna, gonna cause a problem. So there's people in both camps for that and we'll see how it goes long-term, watch this space. I, I'm quietly confident that it's gonna be okay. As for the guide rails, I've used uh, linear, linear bearings manufactured by THK. It's a, they're called THK slide packs. And all it is, is a stainless steel rail with a stainless steel carriage that slides up and down the rail. I bought these from a, a bearing supplier in Melbourne. And I'm pretty sure they could be possibly manufactured in Japan or maybe the US. So I'm, I'm sure you can get them, get them from anywhere. So the, the rail is bolted to the lower half of the frame and the pop top is bolted to the carriage. And as the linear actuators lift up, the rail just slides up and it guides the roof up. And, it, and they work really, really well. I've been really happy with the way that they work. So let's go inside now. We'll have a look at the controller and the linear actuators. This is the controller for the actuators. It couldn't be more simple. It's just got power in over here and then it's got power out, just negative and positive for each actuator. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six. And this is a wide controller. You can also get the, the, con the control boxes with wireless, con with wireless controllers, but I put in a wide controller because I'm going to hook it up to a wireless switch uh, th through a Raspberry Pi later on. So there's not much to the controller, that's about it. I know it's a bit hard to see because there's not a lot of contrast in here, but I've got two actuators up the front, two actuators in the center, and two actuators at the rear. Each actuator can lift 3,000 Newton, so about 300 kilos, and they're 24 volt actuators. The reason I've used 24 volt is because the truck's electrical system is 24 volt and I'm going to run them off the truck system and that's so that if we're in a if we're camping in a place for a few weeks and there hasn't been a lot of sun and the house battery is a little bit low I can always just start up the truck and use that system to lower the roof and bring in the slide out room and lift up the deck and we can get out of there the actuators are IP65 rated so they're sealed against dust you know wind and rain but I don't think they're completely waterproof. They can't be submerged underwater, but they're weather, weatherproof. So I think that's about all there is to say about the actuators. If there's anything else you'd like to know that, that I haven't covered, please let me know in the comments and I'll be more than happy to make another video about it. I, you might be able to see there's a mattress up there. That's where our bedroom is. So our bedroom is on top of the pop top roof and there's another roof that lifts up like a rooftop tent up there. So before I finish up, I'll just show you our plumbing that I've been working on. So for the waste, for the plumbing, I've used 40 mil PVC. 
Our, our toilet is a composting toilet, so we don't have any black water tanks. So all the waste is is taken care of is a shower and two basins. So the the waste runs along here. It comes from the shower. We've, we've got a shower here. Whoops. We've got a shower over there. We've got a toilet there, and there's a basin in the in the centre. The waste comes down underneath the floor, and it comes into our waste water tank here which is this, but I've, I've made it so that the waste tank can be isolated at that valve and we can run the waste out onto the ground and we can use the waste tank as another water tank, which will give us about 200 litres extra water. Uh, for, the, for the gas, I've got two, two nine kilo gas bottles and a dual regulator here, and I've used a half inch copper for the gas with uh i've used flared compression fittings and for the water i've used this 16 mil quick connect pex pressure pipe so here's some of it over here it's just i, I just bought this from a local hardware store it's just it's just brass quick connect fittings and it's uh like a it's kind of like a poly poly pressure pipe and it just clicks in it's really really easy to use so for the, for the water, we're gonna have a basin in the bathroom, which is there, a basin here in the kitchen. And then at the back, I'm gonna have an outdoor shower. And that's about it. I'll just show you where, where I've mounted the hot water service. Come around here. So I've mounted the hot water, the hot water service is a, an instant gas hot water service. And I've mounted it in this toolbox. There wasn't really any good spot to put it in the truck. So I, so I cut a hole in the side of this toolbox and I mounted it in there. And that's gonna save a bit of space. And then I just put these, um, they are fuel neck fillers, two inch neck fillers on the side so the exhaust can come out here and this one can be an air inlet and then I can put these caps on when we're traveling. I hope that's answered some of the questions you've had about the pop top roof. If there's anything I missed and that I didn't cover in this video, please just let me know in the comments and I'll either answer it there or I'll make another video for you. Thanks so much for watching.